Instead of administering your talents, how God is guiding you, you say, well, I administered for a little while, but I got tired already. How many of you got tired already of dealing with things and administering gifts and talents? I got tired already. What a nerve you have. Tell that to the one next to you. What a nerve you have. I mean, do you have gifts? Are those your gifts? Who do you think you are? No, I'm tired. I got fed up with having so many things and that's it. I'm done. I can't wait to say I'm done. I can't wait to be allowed to say that. I'm done. I'm done talking and just take off. I would like to have that moment, but too bad that I have nothing of my own. If I did, I would do it. But there are some fresh ones I know. There are some fresh ones that have the nerve. Look, pastor, I get it, but this is it for me. In my opinion, this is enough already. But what a nerve you have, huh? Tell them the gifts are to be given. They are to be administered. Do you know why there hasn't been a greater flow of gifts in you? Because you have not continued to administer the gifts. Write it down. You close the window of intercession for yourself because the Holy Spirit is waiting for you to flow in your gifts in order to give you more gifts. I mean that flow where you can open things for yourself and expand things. One question. How come some have more gifts than others? Because some are better stewards than others. That's it. That's why. Simple. But I don't have anything. You know why you don't have anything? Because you don't administer anything. Oh, but don't say that because there are people here. No, it's in front of people that I will tell you this so you're embarrassed. But I don't have anything. The one that doesn't have anything, that is because they don't give anything. What did I say? My wrong way of managing things is what has kept me from being able to multiply things. Because if we were created to fructify, it also says that we were created to multiply. Everything that manifests in you is the same thing you have sown. Write it down. Everything that manifests in you is the same thing you have sown. That is a principle. And you can try to go around it as much as you desire. Although many times what you desire are other things, fleshly. So if you don't have more gifts, more talents, if you don't shine brighter each day in that creativity, that anointing of grace, it is because you are not administering correctly. You should check if those gifts and talents and all that grace, if you are using it for yourself, for your own future, or your own pride, or your own strength, or your own ego. What are those gifts being used for? So that they see you? Hello? No. What do you have that degree for, that talent? What are you using it for? How are we using our gifts so that tools are intricate riches that have made you today reap very badly, that have met today made you see your life in the same place, at the same spot, with the same cycle, a repeated man, the same what? The same cycle, in the same, in the same, in the same, in the same. What did I say? Isn't that tiring? That wears you out. That wears you out. That wears you out. Aren't you tired already? I got tired. Stop, man. The same thing over and over. That's why as stewards, we must know how to administer this well. They are the riches of the kingdom that are intricately in us. The things of the kingdom are handled under the knowledge of the life manual. What things should we administer? Time? Gifts or talents? Colossians 3.23 says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Everything I am going to do in each opportunity that presents itself in this life, I'm going to do it for the Lord. How many times did opportunities open up for you, but you did it for you? You did it for yourself. You did it under fleshliness and manipulation. You did it under emotion. Many things that today I have been able to reap is a result of many opportunities I knew how to seize. 
because opportunities are rare. What did I say? They are rare. When they come, they must be seized. Hello? How many people have regrets here? In the times when as a ministry, we were more personal with the people and many didn't appreciate it. And suddenly they are making lots of mistakes because they lack knowledge and, oh, I want help. And the help is no longer the same as when they had the opportunity to take it before. How many opportunities have presented to us to give fruit, to show and model the Father in places and occasions at times, and you didn't take advantage of them, to shine the fruit, but instead you chose to do what the heck you wanted? How many opportunities did we miss out to enjoy wife, children, friends, prophetic dials? How many opportunities have we missed so many times? Opportunities are rare, and many, opportun- many times they have come and gone, and we haven't even noticed that it was an opportunity until it passed. Oh my God, I missed that opportunity. How many said? Oh my God, I missed that opportunity. How many? All. Opportunities are rare, and they must be grabbed by the hair. All of that is part of a good stewardship. All of that is part of a good stewardship. Each occasion that comes to you in life is not a disgrace. They are opportunities. From this prophetic position, your life is not a disgrace. Everything that presents to you, whether good or bad, due to good sowing or bad sowing, you can take advantage of it and turn it into good. Hello? Everything the devil has prepared against you to harm you Everything the devil prepared against you to harm you, God can turn it into good. What did I say? Everything the devil has thrown at you to harm you, God turns it into good. Into what? Into good. The, the harm the devil, the world, and even myself have wanted to do to me, I can take advantage of this opportunity to turn it into good. The opportunities are rare and we have to grab them by their hairs. We have to say, yes, I take advantage of time. We have to stop. We have to take advantage of the opportunity, whether it's good or bad. When we handle the spiritual world based on the life manual, it doesn't matter what season is taking place. No matter what rises up against us, it can be the devil with all hell. It can be Goliath with all his army. We are going to win. We must take advantage of the opportunity to show the devil and show evil that there is God that is with me, that the one that is in me is greater than the one that comes against me. What did I say? What did I say? What did I say? Let's go. The one that is in me, say it, believe it. The one that is in me is greater I'm not fighting because I did it well or correct. I'm not fighting because of all the knowledge I have. I'm fighting because the one that is in me is greater. I'm not measuring if I know a lot or if I know a little. I'm not measuring if I did it wrong or if I did it right. What I'm doing is telling the one that comes against me, hear this well, hear this, the one in me is greater. And now that is the only thing I know to say. The one in me is greater. The one in me is greater. That's why each day brings its own troubles. There are people that are thinking of tomorrow and haven't finished taking or enjoying the opportunity of today. There are people that are wondering what they are going to cook tomorrow, and they still haven't eaten their meal for today. The nerve. Tell the one next to you what a nerve you have. They are going crazy about tomorrow, and today they have not yet enjoyed the meal they're about to have because we don't want to enjoy the seasons. The seasons are opportunities that later in the midst of abundance, we will look back on and laugh. You remember when we used to go to my house after service? to cook rice and eggs, 
because there wasn't anything else? Oh, yeah, I remember that. And you're now in a nice Mercedes, my brother. You're in a nice Mercedes. Do you remember that? I remember that. Praise God. Then you realize that in those opportunities, you learn to enjoy the Father like the Word says. That I know how to live in abundance as well as in scarcity. Doesn't matter the circumstances. I believe God anyway. Anyway. That is part of being a good steward. That is the attitude of a good steward. So today is when you must take advantage of those things that come. And even more in this ministry, which flows in the prophetic. There is always something to be said here. There is always a prophetic word that will connect you. This is why it's important for you in this time to connect with the prophetic dial, to know what the spirit is saying. Where is that prophetic frequency? Where is the spirit? What is he wanting? What is the word for today? This is why the word requires violence, requires the fight against rain, against any type of storm, against any health battle. We are fighting because this word is what will show me to take advantage of the opportunity I have. Hello? In other words, we are teaching you as an administrator of the Father what you must know how to administer your time, your talents, the opportunities, and money. Matthew 6, 19 says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moss and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moss and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Where your treasure is, where else will be? Your heart. The problem about money is that when we administer money incorrectly, then this produces great anguish to a man's life. Money is a tool that God's children use for the kingdom. Hello, what is money used for? Money is utilized for the kingdom. The word says that where your money is, your heart will be also. Where do you think? Or what do you think that money is to be used for? What is money for? To become wealthy? Someone else may say to resolve problems. The word says that God knows our needs. In other words, everything that needs to be resolved, God already has it squared away. Wow. When we have problems, even with our basic needs, it's because we are not funneling our money correctly. When you violate the principles of how money should be managed, then you cannot expect that your life will be successful with money. In other words, you want to reap what you haven't sown. And since you don't reap, what do you do? What do you do when you don't reap? You get cranky. You get mad. You get a bad attitude. Is a bad attitude good? A bad attitude is of the devil. Has anything good come from a bad attitude? Every bad attitude is bad. It means, don't bother me. What are you, why are you talking to me, this nonsense to me? So you cannot be demanding something you have not sown. When we are managing money and sowing, if we are not doing it for the kingdom, then we will have issues. Because if you're sowing only thinking of this earth, it says that what you sow on this earth will be destroyed. Even what you sow on earth must have a covering of the kingdom. Therefore, money should be administered correctly. Firstly, prioritizing to the kingdom. When we sow money, we are giving our own life. We are saying that money represents time, effort, talent, and work. Money itself is an expression of worship. Hello? What did I say? It's an expression of worship. That's why when we are offering, we are worshiping God. And no one should come before God without worshiping him. We must know how to manage money from a spiritual perspective. Because remember that you don't own what you administer. You are his administrator. Who gives it to you? Who gives you the money? It's God. If many times you don't know where your money is going, it's because you have not known how to administer it well. Because the one that gave it to you, you never saw again. Oops, did I say that? 
the one that gives it to you has not seen you ever since. Hello, what did I say? The one that gives you the money, when he gives it to you, he does not see you ever again. In other words, what was given to you was for you to multiply it, but what you did with it, what did you do with it? You ate it all. What did you do with the money? Slurped it up. What did you do? That's what you, that's what you did. God gives man money and man eats it up. But then he says, oh my God, I don't have any money. They are such thieves and have such a nerve that they ask for money. They blow it and they ask for more tomorrow. We have to ask God for money. There are things that you don't have to ask for. Some things you have to take on and assume. You can write that down. There are things that you don't have to ask for, but you have to assume them. And money is a resource that should chase us. Money is a tool to be administered for the kingdom. If you're broke and in misery, then check what you do with your money because the spirit himself will tell you what you should do. But many don't want to hear the voice of the spirit in their hearts because they don't want anyone telling them what to do with their money because I already know what I want to do with my money. Matthew twenty two twenty one says, Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, so give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. You have to understand that in this whole life, you're an administrator. So give Caesar what is Caesar's. Give each thing what corresponds to it, but give God what is God's. There are established principles of how things should be done. There is tithing and there is the principle of sowing, which is that everyone should give according to what was placed in their hearts, not out of need or sadness. When you don't align to that, you're not being a good administrator of the kingdom. You're going to live a life out of control. That's why Paul told the Corinthians early or clearly in 1 Corinthians 16 two, you can look it up. On the day, on the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. In other words, he motivated them to save up in order to invest in the things of the kingdom, of the ministry. That's why we were always receiving investing in lives. Each person that sits next to you has a cost to this ministry. Each one has a cost. It's not free, but that comes from the constant flow of the body. And if the body does not listen and doesn't know how to administer what the spirit is giving, how can the kingdom advance? Uh, God will help us. That's how we have been fooled, saying God will help us. Don't you know you're the one that has to administer God's things? That's why he gives it to you. Who does God give things? And for what? So that you administer them. For whom? For you. For whom? For him. How many are understanding? Everything you used to do, you did it for you because of you, the way you liked it, the way it pleases me. But things are not done the way I like it or the way I prefer, or for my wife, or my kids. What I do, I do for him. When we do things for him, then things turn out excellent. The word says that the blessing of the Lord is the one that enriches and does not add sadness. Everything that is done for God does not add any type of difficulty. Everything you do under the stewardship of the Father, as a steward, all of it will be done with excellence. It will suffer no harm. But that is when we know to administer things for the Father. In reality, our whole life, there is not a time when we stop being his stewards. If you didn't know that, that's your problem. But at no point in our lives have we stopped being God's stewards of God. Never. We've always been stewards of God. Always. Now, if you have just learned this and you say, I'm a steward of whom? That I was a steward of who? Now, the big thing here is you didn't realize you were a steward. Do I have anything? 
Today you've learned that you have a lot. Yes or no? Do you have time? Do you have time? You have time. Yes, you have time. Okay, so you have time. Do you have gifts also? Do you have gifts? Do you have talents? A career? Do you have opportunities? Do you have money? Yes. The fact that you blew off your money and are now broke, that's another thing. That you were in misery because you didn't administer your wealth correctly, that's another thing. But you're full of time. You've got time. You've got gifts. You've got opportunities. And you have money. And those are the things we need to know how to administer. How many are understanding? How many are understanding this? So where do I apply stewardship? Okay, we already know why we are stewards. We also know what we are going to administer. We know it's time, gifts, talents, opportunities, and money. Okay, we got it. But then why do so many people get clueless? Uh, I got it. I know I'm a child of the Father, so out of gratitude, I have to administer what He has given me. How cool! So I have to... Wait, what do I have? Oh, I have time. Oh yeah, I have gifts. What else do I have again? Oh, opportunities. Where do I apply that? Where do I apply time correctly? Where do I apply my gifts? Where do I apply the opportunities that come up? Where do I apply the money? Where? Point A, in our bodies. That's where we are going to apply the wealth that we have to administer. 1 Corinthians 6.19 says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Whom you have received from God? You are not your own. Oh, so that body is not yours? Hello, that body is not yours. Whose is it? It belongs to the Holy Spirit. It says here, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Within you, there is a person. His name is the Holy Spirit. That person is dwelling in a place just like we are in this room. And that person that lives in you comes from God. And he is using that temple because that temple, which is your body, is no longer yours. It's his. Tell someone how dare you. That body is not yours. That's the temple of the Holy Spirit. What a nerve. Who told you that body was yours? That body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's why the body can't be used for all the worldliness that I want. Did you hear that? That's a tough one. This body is not to watch porn. It's not to be unfaithful to your spouse. It's not to masturbate. Did that really come out of my mouth? It's not to steal. That body is not to be mistreated or harassed. Time needs to be invested in that body. It needs to be administered correctly. That body needs to be given opportunities and you need to invest money in it. Hello, money, invest money into it. We have to take care of ourselves. We have abused our bodies. Let's take care of ourselves. We all have to learn to take care of ourselves. We must learn because it is not the devil's best interest that we take care of ourselves because many times we are the ones fighting with our bodies, with lack of rest, with anxiety, with depression, people with a lot of anxiety, a lot of pressure and a lot of fleshiness and not eating well. This is not healthy. We have abused our bodies. We have to care for our body. We have to invest time in it. Use our gifts to take care of our body. Use the wisdom of the spirit on how to take care of your body. We have to invest money in it. We have to eat well. Eat well. Oh, I don't eat vegetables. I don't like them. We have to be good stewards. Our body cannot be a body that lives on impulse and craziness. Doing whatever we feel like doing with uncontrollable desires. We have to submit the body. Oh, pastor, I, I'm not a married man. Submit, but I'm a single guy though. Submit, that's why the word comes. 
because it comes to confront all the arguments of the devil in your mind. The thing is, is that you don't invest the time. If you don't invest time connecting to the prophetic dial, your body will lose it. It's that simple. If you don't administer correctly for your body with time, with the opportunities you're given, with the gifts that are being taught here, tools for you to use, and with money, you will have problems. You will be falling into the same patterns all the time, over and over and over. Point B. Now, our family. Where do I apply stewardship? In my body, which we just talked about, and in our family. 1 Timothy 3.12. A deacon must be faithful to his wife and must manage his children and his household well. Those who have served well gain an excellent standing and great assurance in their faith in Christ Jesus. We must know to apply good stewardship in our home. We have to allocate time, allocate gifts, allocate opportunities. We must seek and take advantage of opportunities in our family for our wife and children and invest money in them. What do we need to do? Dollar bills. We have to inject dollar bills in our family. Do whatever you want, but be clear. We must invest in our family. We must invest in our wife. We must invest in our children. Of course, I repeat, we must know how to manage the seasons because if there are no funds, then there are no funds. Well, uh, it, it has to be now. I have to, I have to buy stuff now. But what if there's no money now? Well, there is no money. The times when there is no money, let's adjust to the fact that there is no money. We don't have to go crazy here. Why pressure ourselves when there is no money? That is bad behavior. Do you understand? You are wanting to take on things when it's not the right time. But when the time is not right for some things, I assure you, it is the right time for other things that you're not focusing on. Hello? Usually when it's not the right time for one thing, it's the right time for another. Hello? Why don't we then invest time in what we should? Uh, it's because that thing is what I want. Exactly. So then we are burdened by vanity, wanting things when I say so, not when they are possible. How many are understanding me right now? So we need to know the right time for things. Everyone wants to have it all, but not everything is possible when we want it. The fact that we don't have something now does not mean that we will never have it. It's a matter of time. Point C, in our ministry, Matthew 13, 44 says, the kingdom of heaven is like, tr like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought that field. In other words, the kingdom of heaven is when you find that field of wealth. And when you say, I found it, what do you do? You sell everything you have to go buy that field. That's how the kingdom of heaven is. That's how our ministry is. When we find where we connect to the prophetic, where I connect to who I truly am, what should we do? Should we passively take it on or go for it full force? You have to apply time, gifts, opportunities, and riches in the ministry that you are connected to. You need to know that you have found a treasure, a treasure that is taking us to greater riches, that is taking us to the kingdom. Hello? Tell me if that is not worth it to sell everything for that. Hello? Isn't it worth it to give it all? Time, opportunities, gifts and talents, money to what connects me to the whole kingdom? Hello? Where do you connect to the kingdom? In the ministry. In every ministry thing that you're doing is where the kingdom manifests. In every ministry thing you're doing is where the kingdom manifests. That's why 1 Corinthians 10 31 says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the church of God, even as I try to please everyone in every way. 
For I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. In other words, we are investing time, gifts, opportunities, and riches into the ministry. Those that don't invest time, those that don't invest gifts, those that don't invest money into the ministry, then their stewardship is not for the Father. Can you write that down? Those that don't invest time, those that don't invest gifts and money into the ministry, then their stewardship isn't for the Father. Your stewardship is for yourself. You're doing it as you please, but that has nothing to do with administering the riches of the Father. The riches of the Father have always been there. You haven't seen them manifested because of your bad management, because you have not known how to administer them correctly. Hello? But those who learn to administer the riches of the Father will always have plenty. Now that sounds wonderful. Did you feel that? I felt that. Those that don't learn to manage the riches for the ministry will never be able to enjoy seeing the riches of God flow in their lives. There is wealth within us. Even if you see the opposite, there are riches within us. So point C was ministry. Point D is in our work. In our work. We are talking about where we apply our stewardship. We said that we apply it in our bodies, in our families, and we apply it in our ministry, and we apply it also in our work. Ephesians 6, 5 says, Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them not only to win their favor when their eye, when their eye is on you. In other words, not so that they see me. How many of you would do things better when your boss came around? You would put on a show. How many of you would start working when you would hear someone say, here comes the boss? That's because we were doing things for their eyes and not for Christ. Verse six continues to say, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. How many of you understood that? Even I understood that. But here, what it continues to say is, and masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that, the, that he who is both their master and yours in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. In other words, if you're an employer, hear how you should conduct yourself. But if you're an employee, also Hear how you should conduct yourself. Don't be abusive with those under you. And those that are below, do not be abusive with those above you. That's why there's been such bad stewardship, because we thought that stewardship was based on manipulation so that others see me. And that's not how it goes. Our stewardship is done for the Father. For whom? And who were you doing it for? Who were you administering the riches for? For you. That's who you were serving. Now you understand why there was a bad stewardship in your life. Because you didn't do things for God. You would do it for this one or for that one or for that other person. And that's not how it goes. Conclusion, number one. No one should take on a job that takes away the stewardship from their home or their ministry. In other words, none of those areas can be touched. Stewardship should be all around, in your home, in your family, in your ministry, and in your job. In other words, you have to manage all properly, but no one can take on a job that affects their stewardship of their home, their family, or their ministry, never. How many understood this? That should always be taken into account, that administering the right thing should never interfere with any of those areas. Therefore, a job cannot take away the time to administer my family and the ministry. Number two, no child of God should refrain from being a faithful steward of the Father in the gifts and talents that he gives them. You can't stop being a good steward. There are people that because they don't work in a specific place, they let themselves go. They get lazy. Uh, What are you up to? Uh, Nothing. A man with so much wealth that could be exercised at home. 
There are people that have many traits and talents and that don't have a job, but at their house, they do nothing. They're just there. What are you up to? Uh, nothing. That's because you want it that way. Because if you would pay attention to all the broken electrical outlets in your house, hello, and all the mess in your house, and you know how to fix all those things, then take care of them. Invest time, gifts, use them. You have opportunities. You always have opportunities. You can always do something. Who told you there was nothing to do? There is always something to do, man. That's nonsense. There is always something to do. There's always a lot to do. Don't you know that life from a position of principles, as hard as you may have to work, you'll never surpass the mess you've made. You'll be fixing and mending the mess you made until Christ comes back. Therefore, there's a good opportunity to maximize things. Every season has great opportunities. And in every season, I can implement the gifts and talents that I have. Number three, the steward should give God what belongs to God. Write it down. If talents, then talents. Give him talents. If your stewardship is in your hands, your voice, manual labor, that belongs to God. It all belongs to God. If your stewardship is in the intellect of teaching, that should go to God. What you have learned here today is that you don't own anything. If you used to manage things as if they were yours, you have some nerve. What did I say? You have some nerve. That's why things don't turn out well for you. Until you implement good kingdom stewardship, knowing what you're a good steward for, what are the riches you have, which today we have learned that it has to do with your time, your gifts, your opportunities, and your money. And those riches we have, we will apply in our body, our home, our family, in the ministry, and in my job. So being a steward is being an administer, an administrator of everything a man may possess on earth. Everything. Can you write that down? Being a steward is being an administrator of everything a man may possess on earth. Those that could not find meaning in life are finding it today because everything you have is to be administered for the Father. Some were doing the wrong things and some were pretending they had nothing to do. That's why the steward of the kingdom must have wisdom and vision to go to places where there is fruit. We are not wasting time here. I'm not investing my time in nonsense. Where I invest my time is because I know there is fruit. I know I will reap because I know how to administer things. Am I going to waste time watching trash? Am I going to waste time associating with fleshly things? Does that produce anything good? No. My time watching soap operas with adultery, seeing how one takes the other's husband, uh, how to be good in bed or get aroused or even pornographic movies, hello? So we have to have vision and wisdom to be able to go to places that bear fruit. We don't have time to waste. Listen to this. You need to invest in your stewardship. That investment is knowing. That investment is knowing. Number one, what? Number two, where? Number three, when? Nothing is by chance. What am I investing? Where am I investing it? In me? In my family? In the ministry? In my job? When should I do it? We need to know how to administer things. And I finish saying this. I must administer the riches of the kingdom that have been entrusted to me. Today's topic is, I am a steward of the Father. Today, I come to tell you that you're not poor. Today, I come to tell you that you're full of wealth and that if you want to live your own way, that is your choice. But if today you don't start administering the riches of the kingdom, it is because you want to remain where you are.